What's up everybody? Brett here, back today playing some more of our Total War Warhammer 2 Torox the Brass Bull Vortex campaign. Let's play. Alright guys, we are in a pretty sick position. I love what we've managed to craft in this uh, Let's Play. We've got all four of the unique legendary lords. Morgur, Torox, Kazrak, and Malagor. We're still recovering from some of the rough battles we took at the end of the last episode. Quest battles, so they had to be done. You know they had to be done. And we have some work to do in a lot of different areas today. Let's actually start moving down towards uh, the causeway. I want to be careful because I don't exactly want to pick a fight uh, with Mazda Mundi down here. Because if you remember right, he's got like a full stack of dinos just chilling. And I think we can just afford to take a turn or two and just recuperate. Um... Damn. Should we do this for the extra... You know what? I'm going to do this. For the extra 50 dread per turn, I think that's worth it. We really need to get the dread machines going. Um, we're going to recover here on Malagor for a little while. He's really got nowhere to go except uh, north towards Tretch. And along the way, I want to make sure I get this Skull Reef for a ridiculous amount of favor. Uh, Morgur here. I just moved him off camera. I uh, was kind of taking a look at where everyone needs to go today. We've got... We've got some uh, more units being recruited to fill that out. Uh, once we take out Nagrar, which shouldn't be that difficult, there's only nine units in here. He'll probably recruit like five more guys though. Uh, we will perform the ritual here. And that um, will... Let's see. It'll get us close at least to the next tier where we can get more Jabberslides, Gorgons, and uh, Cygors. So, for right now, however, we're going to go here and take the Frozen City. Based on this army, it's clear to me that they uh, were recently confederated by Rakarth. And I want to take this fight just to get the battle, just to get the day started with a fun battle. I'm going to send Torox in by himself. I haven't had a chance to really see him go to town. He's not fully juiced up with all of his, you know, um, yellow line buffs, but his items are insane. His abilities are insane, and his stats just by themselves are insane. They've got some armor-piercing missiles. A Steganon could probably bully him for a little while. Let's just see what happens. Even the Masters can do probably two Masters. Um, and a Steganon might be enough to kill Torox. I don't know. I don't know. But I want to test him. And I'm not scared to test him. So let's get something, some kind of formation going. It's been a while since we had a chance to actually use this army. Because it's so powerful and auto-resolve, there's almost no reason to ever do that. Uh, let's see. So, just for the sake of figuring it out, this could be, this is basically our front line, guys. And how glorious is that? Full front line of those dudes. We've got some Bestigors. Let's do something like this. Because the Bestigors have an encouragement aura, they sort of act like heroes. Keep the Jabber Slight in the center. Cygor in the rear. And then our hero core. You know what? These guys should have been in with the Minotaurs. See, this is why I'm doing this right now. Just to make sure that... Next time I actually go to use this army... I have a good idea of how I want to, uh, to place them. You're on a chariot. You should be on a chariot as well. Yeah, we got chariot bros here. Not so bad. I love armies that have very few hot groups. Alright, let's go. Get in there, Torox. So Torox's stats as they stand right now, he's got a 5% ward save, 15% physical resistance. 50% missile resistance, 25% magic resistance. He's got regeneration, perfect vigor. Blood Greed, we can pop all this stuff. Alright, who wants to get it first? Oh, the Cygor is going to help out? Let's make sure we pop this. Get them. You know what, get in there, Torox. Get in there and pop this. Hell yeah, it went off exactly where I, I clicked the button. That's excellent. We're going to go after this. <laughs> the sorceress. And then let's not forget we can suck all the, uh, the ammo out of these dudes. 
That didn't. <laughs> that, that didn't sound like anything I wanted to say. That's my bad. And if they're going to charge me, we're going to charge them back. Remember, Just remember you asked for this. And here they come, the beautiful boys. What's making them slow? Ah, it's the Bestigors. We shouldn't put the Bestigors in the hot group with them. It'll just slow them down. So, another little lesson learned there. Thorok's kind of getting shot up. Cygor Boulder. Did it hit the tree? Hate it when that happens. Where's where's the big boy? Where's the special one? I mean, go do something, man. All my guys are so fa I don't know. This I took this fight just to get a little blood on the day. We're not going to cast any spells. Why waste any of our winds of magic? Dang, they're like, there was like an effect that was lasting for a few seconds longer that was knocking them back. Hell yeah. You guys are crazy for standing and fighting this dude. The Master is a good anti-large killer. Use the chariots to chase the horse. It's the only thing that's going to catch him. Sure, go chase the Stegadon. Did we lose anything? Did I lose even a single Minotaur? Alright, this was fun. And then Brass Body is where we're going to get the majority of our resistance from. At 40% missile, uh, not missile resistance, straight up ward save, plus the melee defense, pretty huge. I want to do that a lot. I've discovered on Reddit, after reading, that there are secret traits for Torox for being the last bull standing in any of the armies. I don't know if I'm going to throw away my entire army to get those secret traits. Uh, but they're pretty cool. They give you casualty replenishment rate as well as like a 5% ward save. Um, let's raise in advance. I'm not building a herd stone here even though I have one available. Torox already level 31. 43, uh, 43 turns into this campaign. Doing quite well. Um, yeah, I think we finish this. Get call for violence. Get the benefits for our... Uh, we could get them for the best of gores. I'm, I'm not really that interested. What I want is the, the missile resistance, melee attack, and weapon strength for the Minotaurs, Jabberslife, and Gorgon. And then we can get Apocalyptic Vision, which gives melee attack as well. That's worth it. We should definitely do that. Hmm... Um, Bray Scream is a good spell. Uh, they're all good spells. They've they've really done a good job since this game has come out, um, and constantly revisiting and rebalancing stuff. It's easy to say sometimes that some things suck, or they're not as like situationally useful as others. But for the most part, I'll say that CDA has done a good job in balancing. Man, Biting Blade is great on a chariot. Just more armor piercing. A little more HP now that he's on the chariot is also quite good. Even with the raid stance we don't quite get there. But at least we're gonna make a little bit of money. Next turn we'll hit him with Morgur. Malagor needs to rest and re-recruit. And then Kazrak here is good as well. We've got ogres.
Do we not have any regiments of renown? I think we have all the regiments of renown in our armies. Awesome. All right, guys, let's roll the turn. You know you're doing a good job as the Beastman in the late game when there's not that many factions to cycle through? Because you've slaughtered them all, <laughs> is, the, is the idea behind that. Alright, let's keep pushing through with Kazrak. I want to find my next uh, Hearthstone location. That's, that's really all I care about right now. This is not a great spot, but I bet, I mean, Hexwaddle would be an amazing spot if I can take it. What am I at? 18%. I can move a tiny bit more. I can get to 10%. And let's just keep healing. Yeah, we're not going to be able to take Hexwaddle. We're going to have to take something else and then force their army out of there. But this is, this is the danger zone down here. I'm not even going to pretend... Like we're not in serious danger every time we come down here. Mazdamundi is going to be able to, to field really big stacks. So let's get him some Bestigors. Uh, Torox, it's about time. Let me see. What I can do is, how much Dread do I have? Yeah, not enough. I was going to say, maybe I could upgrade the amount of Bestigors, or the amount of uh, Minotaurs that I could get. But if I get rid of my two best of wars, I've got nothing else really to throw in this army. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they picked up, what was that, a couple couple guys? Up to 30 here. Level up our caster. A potion of healing? Man, that's a good, that's a good item to not have on someone. Let's see if we can give it to someone else. Get life leeching. You can have double healing on Morgur is incredible. He'll reach his healing cap so fast. There we go. Nurgle's foul stink is a pretty strong passive. All right, Morgur. It's a close victory. They've got ogres with man eater. They got the man eaters with the great weapons. That's pretty sweet. Let's take this fight. And then we're going to bring the last of the Chaos Spawn. We've got, I think, three available Chaos Spawn. Uh, we're going to bring them in. Probably get rid of the Ungors. These two right here, maybe one of the Raiders, something like that. I want this to be a very beast-focused army. you got to have some infantry to climb walls, but we don't have to have that much. Okay. This is usually a pretty good... Hold on. This is usually a pretty good map. You guys will be our front line and center. We're not going to bother to Vanguard deploy. Morgan's going to be back here with some Jabber Slythe, Chaos Spawn. Really get him at home with his monstrous bros. Have our raiders there. Have our harpies here in case they want to bring some uh, dark riders or something like that up. And there we go. Just nice flat formations. And the jabber slithe, not just any jabber slithe, the Vorgelin Broodmother is going to have to do some work. We've got spirit leeches. Could spread out our hero core a little bit, but I like them for trying to duel the death hag together. Or the Dreadlord. Let's bring him in. Let's get all the way in. Harpies, we can start circling. See if we can mess with the AI's targeting a little bit. Go, go, go. Hell yeah. Go, go, go. It's got regen if it's engaged in melee. Does it? Or do we need to unlock that? I think we still need to unlock that, uh... 
There we go. The Ogre Man-Eaters are going to get in. Ow. That's probably not a good target for us to fight. Spread out a little bit, guys. We're bunching up a little too much. Probably time to start playing a little bit faster. Definitely want to shut down these Dark Shards. So let's get you there. Let's get you there. You there. Alright, cool. Morga has no abilities yet. It's kind of sad. The strongest thing about the Jabber Slide that I've seen is its like incredible ability to just jump through front lines. Just to not care at all. There we go. Have our Chaos Spawn beat down the Dreadlord. Alright, a bit of a rookie mistake here. Let's path them through and then now get the surround. Let's do our best here to keep these guys from rallying. We've got a Chaos Spawn unit that has popped up. That's Morgur's unique ability. Oh man, get in there. Or ma'am, I should say. Sorry, ma'am. Brood mother. Check. I will say, these man-eaters fought pretty bitterly. Are they immune to psychology? They are. And they've got the Ogre Charge, which allows them to bypass half of the charge uh, charge defense of a defender, which is pretty cool. Nice. Good to do a little bit better than the AI would have given us, probably. Sorry guys, if there's any dead space in me talking, I keep looking over. I've got one of those like uh, charging pads on my on my computer desk. And my phone keeps like not charging. I got one of those new like iPhone 12s. The real kind of the, one of the more basic ones. I dropped my phone the other day and it like The problem was, you know, you ever drop a phone and nothing and you're like, "Oh my god, it's going to be destroyed." And you look at it and it's perfectly fine. It's usually in my mind because of the angle that it fell on. And also, of course, the, uh, I mean, like, the hardness of the surface, how far did it fall, of course. Um, but it fell, my phone that I've had for literal years, it's an iPhone, like, a, an older iPhone. It fell, like, two feet. It fell perfectly flat on its back, inside of a case, but because it fell, like, super flat, it just, like, shattered. I had to get a new phone, which sucks. I hate, I hate having to spend that kind of money, like... Seemingly out of nowhere. Let's perform our ritual. Because you finally get, you know, it takes a while to get comfy with your phone. You use it every day, and then you finally get comfortable with it, and then it breaks, and you gotta get a new one. Alright, we got 38 marks of ruination for that. That feels like a lot. And that puts us over the top here, ruination level 5. Um, where does it say how many I have? 154? Okay, I've gotta get... In order to finish this, we've got to get the Heart of the Dark here. We've got to get to 220. So our next Herdstone needs to be coming soon. I should not have moved there. I should have got back into my stance. Um, let's go for... Primeval Rage. Blade Master. And then we'll take some armor on our Gore Bull there. <coughs> All right, and with that herdstone done, I kind of want to let Tor uh, Torox leave this land. Um, I want to bring him to like Ulthuan and start rampaging amongst the elves. I kind of want to leave this whole peninsula and all this stuff to uh, Morgur. 
And we'll just keep looting, just for the money. Or can you use that, buddy? No, huh? Man, really got nothing for you. Lower the cost of stuff, get the zealot. Torox up to level 32. Hmm. What was I getting? Oh yeah, Call of Violence. Almost have immortality on our other Gorbul. Get that last bit of armor, now up to 150. Are we going to the 500 HP? You gotta start off in the Juggernaut raiding stance or else you just kinda get screwed. What kind of army is this? Is this a full stack? Nope. Another one of the uh, Rakarth reject armies. And then down here, still doing the damn thing. We're doing good, doing good. Alright, everybody's good to go. But we now have the money to kind of upgrade and get stuff that we've been wanting to get. Might as well, while it's cheap. I'm also going to get that. Everything's on a bit of a discount. I'm going to get this because I think one of our biggest setbacks is going to be units with a lot of ammo. Especially if we're going to fight pirates. The Vampire Coast having their ammo drop by like 50% could be really strong. People on the other side of the world scared of us declaring war. We haven't even got there yet. Axiato has confederated with Juan Hopek. Okay. Are we recovered yet? Almost. We'll sit for one, maybe one more turn. Doom of Mankind. Damn, lowering lowering a Winds of Magic cost for everything by 20% is just goofy. So we gotta do it. What else could we bring in this army to get rid of some of the other stuff? Uh, Manticore could be cool. Chaos Spawn, that's not for you. Can we even, rec I mean, can we recuperate... In the water? I think so, right? I don't think I want to make this a herd stone. I'll hit it, but I'm scared because this army and this army are both huge, and if they sandwich me, I'll be in trouble. I'd like to get down here. And I'm just trying to rip and tear along the way. Let's get the healing. I don't need the horde growth. They gave me a doe. I don't I don't need that. What have you got for me, Kazrak? I'm happy he has lightning strike. I didn't realize he did, because all my other lords kinda don't. If I had thought about that, I'd realize I don't care if they try to uh, to attack me. Vigor, lost reduction, minus 33%. Not to mention the Stalk and Strider. Feral Fervor is pretty sweet. We'll get that. Caster in here is also pretty strong. Giving him a bound fireball is nice. We're already going to be looking to him to cast. And then he finally gets Arcane Conduit too. That's awesome. And he's still a couple of levels away from a Razor Gore Chariot. Could maybe raise a Herdstone down here, now that I think about it. I don't know what's still alive down here. It could just be Mazda Mundi. Let's get hidden. Okay, we just don't have any cash at the moment. 
So many levels. Let's get... Uh, I like Soul Blight. I do indeed like Soul Blight. Let's see. We're going to go north here with Morgur. Although I could cut back. I have no armies here. I should probably cut back. We can maybe go and take out the Palace of Ruin. And then consider cutting backwards. What I'd also like to do is get rid of you guys. Get rid of one of you. Oh, wait. God dang it. That's why I don't have them. Because I don't have the buildings built. I need to get this level... Yeah, and I don't have the gold or the uh, the favor to get Squalid Encampment and then turn around and upgrade this. Well, that makes a lot more sense. It's okay, though, because it, it doesn't really matter. I'll just re-recruit. Silly little mistake there, but I, I just need a little bit more money. Which I'll probably get from this. Sure, I'll take the next level of Bray Scream. Suffering some attrition here. Let's explore the island and try and make a ton of cash. Alright, that's a baby army. I don't need to fight this. As fun as it always is to see a leviathan in combat. Absolutely not necessary. And I'll take the bonus experience and the total favor. That's cool. Is this bugged or something? Do they only have one stance at sea? Because this attrition is going to be rough. We'll make it to Ulthuan, but it will be all torn up. Alright, excellent melee defense on them. And they're so close to level 20 on all of them. Let's take the call to Morslib. Thanks to that, we now have the cash we need to hook that up. And I think we're good on everybody. Oh, we've got some... Uh, excellent, we've got some research to do. Um, what were we getting? Oh yeah, the regeneration on the Chaos Spawn and the Jabber Slice. Let's make that our next priority. That's a cool one. Missile resistance for our Gorgons could be nice as well, considering we have four of them. Roll the turn, baby. Spent multiple turns in ambush stance. That's nice. Ambusher trait for Malagor. Oh, the job of leveling is never done. It's a good problem to have, though. Here, let's get presence of more slip. Going one, two, three like that on the traits is never a terrible idea. So, they probably own all of these chaos areas, but they're so far away. The only one I care about right now is this one, and then we're going to start doubling back. Let's get this. I'd also like to level this up to give that ability to our army. Could come here and just start smacking these dudes around. That's probably another great place. I've got three herd stones available. I've got to make this happen. Um... Dang. Hmm. I don't know if there's any good central locations for them, but I have so many, I just need to put them everywhere. Morgur's going there. I just need to go to Ulthuan. That's where I'm going to start making the most money. Oh, we found a place with no attrition somehow. Just a magic spot in the middle of the ocean with no attrition? Nope. We did not. God, we gotta get to we gotta get to to shore. As strong as that army is, it doesn't matter if they show up 
half dead. Yeah, we only have one stance. Okay. Interesting that they have this much. Is it chaos corruption? Corruption details. Is it Skaven, maybe? No? Why are we being attritioned? Did they use their right? Yes. Oh, they did. Okay, they used the right of Sotek. It's like as if our army was being attacked by snakes. But as long as we stay in hidden encampment, we're fine. And I am down to take the Monolith of the Fallen Gods for our next Herdstone. That'll be a beautiful base of operations down here for us to start taking the fight to Mazdamundi. I like that a lot. I like it a lot, as they say in uh, Dumb and Dumber. I have a huge DVD collection. I realized the other day I don't have Dumb and Dumber. So I had to. I bought that ASAP. I know I'm old. I own DVDs. I don't care. My girlfriend just got a new, uh, a new vehicle. And the first thing I did was I went to a place called Half Price Books where you can get CDs and all sorts of stuff. Hmm. That's it. Campaign movement range by 50%. And I got her a bunch of old, like, funny CDs like Spice World and uh, Destiny's Child. And she likes country music, so some country music stuff. And I got one of those, like, uh, CD holders that goes on uh, your fold-down mirror in your car. It's like the most 1990s, early 2000s thing. And it makes me so happy. Yeah, let's get out of the attrition. Get out of the rocky seas here. Alright. And we'll start to heal, thank goodness. What kind of army are we looking at here? Okay, nothing. You got nothing. And after we crush this, we can take a, a turn to recruit the units that we actually want into this army. We'll loot and raise. More chaos spawn capacity? Yes, please. And I've just kind of noticed how crazy out of control our dread is getting. But that's good. Because I actually have things that I want to uh, to use with that. I guess I can't get multiple spawn wranglers. That might be busted, might be OP. We want to boost the freakish mutations here. Melee defense and missile resistance for our army is nice, but the melee attack and stuff is as well. This is the tree that you really want to go down. These abilities are super powerful, but for now, I'm going to get the Freakish Mutations. You know what? No, that's goofy. We should get... I'm, not, I'm changing my mind a bunch. We should get Manbane. This is my entire army. We should 100% do that instead. Let's finish up Spirit Leech. And then just keep getting our armor here. And then now we can do what i would been trying to do. We'll get that. I like the idea of having the giants. And then from here, I can get four units that I really want. Okay. So let's get that done. Combine you. Um, get rid of you two. And one more, one more. Um... I'm going to combine these two and get rid of this guy. And there we go. The Chaos Spawn are our frontliners. The frontliners aren't as important. I want to keep some raiders. I want to keep my harpies. Uh, I think they serve a pretty sweet role in this type of army. Very beast-centric army. And eventually we'll bring giants and stuff into this group as well. Let's spend some money. or some dread here. Um, What have I been wanting? 
I mean, I want more giants and chaos spawn. I want more best of gores. And that's like all my cash right there. And I also want some more minotaurs. To get rid of the best of gores in Torox's army. That way Torox can get um, more... More of the Minotaurs, and then the best of gores can go to Kazrak's army, is what I'm thinking. We're gonna do that. That's a, I think that's a good spin. Okay. Kazrak. Time to go to work. Start making you boys some money. Lizardmen, no problem. Let's raise the Herdstone. And now our base of operations. Ooh, we get a port as well that has a garrison? Oh, that's interesting. That's the first time I've seen this. The bestial landings. And they increase our casualty replenishment rate. That is... that is sick. Um... Get some centigores, man. Some centigores. And we're gonna be doing sieges. There's lots of... Built up stuff here. Hexoaddle and Skeggy. So I think a siege buffing building is called for. I don't know how it's going to decide the garrison. I hate that I don't get to choose the garrison myself. That's something that I know a lot of people have been asking for in the game. For a long time. And it's still, it's still not in. Okay, what else? Yeah, let's buff our best of cores. This will give them leadership and melee defense. Or I start buffing Kazrak himself. I'm gonna buff Kazrak. What buildings do I have? Do I have the best? I do. I have the best score building. I just don't have the means of recruiting them. Um... Yeah, in order to do that, I need to be able to let all of the Bestigors go from Torox's army. Which I might be able to do. I don't know if I can do that in the ocean, though. That's my only problem. Get the cost reduction for Pit of Shades. You're all moved out. Yeah, can't recruit. In this stance, we gotta get out of the water. But, we can go here and see what's at this Skull Reef. And then go mess with Tretch. Let's raid the Cove. And this is what I was hoping for, an actual real fight. Careful what you wish for, though. Um, Depth Guard can tear up almost any number of my infantry. And their artillery is going to be a nightmare for me. We'll do our best, as always, like I always say. Hmm, I'm trying to think, is there... I could Vanguard deploy my Hounds and my Centigars in an attempt to shut down their Mortars and Cannons. That is almost certainly the play. Nice front line. I could also deploy super far up, which is tempting. I might do it with my raiders. They have no fast movers. You guys are going to be hot group four. We just got to get them in the trees. For real? They're not hidden? Okay. There we go. Alright. Trying to find the sweet spot, guys. We gotta... We gotta keep these guys hidden or else they're gonna get torn to pieces. Okay. I'll take that. We've got kind of the full spread depending on where they, they put their artillery. Malagor here is going to be very important as well. 
Razor Gore. Let's make them back up here. And then our giants. Heavy hitters and damage absorbers. 12,000 HP. Let's move up. Remember, our guys are basically invisible. And we used our ability to, to lessen the amount of ammo they have. I don't know why you're running. I gave you a good target. And you're going to get wrecked by that spell. Send them in. Send them in. Send the giants in as well. Don't really want to summon a Saigo. I'd rather just keep using Flock of Dooms. Alright, you guys got to go. Time to go, time to go. Those are Death Guard and Leviathan. You're not going to win that fight. You're not even going to do anything productive, really. If we're being honest. This is a good time for a Pendulum. And there we go. They're still chasing. Our front line is about to get in. And they're shooting my raiders to pieces. Okay. You guys go up and around. You go right in. Keep pushing, keep pushing. I don't really want to fight the Death Guard. Alright, keep going, keep going. Sure. If you guys want to fight the Ungor Spearmen, that's fine. Who still has ammo? I'm trying to cast this, like, right in the center here. There we go, that's a brutal cast. Why don't y'all go help out against those Depth Guard? Cast an enfeebling foe on this crab while we beat him down. Shoot up the pole arms. Yeah, our units, we're not going to be able to kill the Death Guard like that. That's pretty, pretty rough strat. Just an attrition-based fighting strategy. Would be better to overcast this versus the, uh, the Death Guard. But against regular zombies, all you need is the regular cast. Start shooting there. Yeah, just back up. Just back up and shoot the Death Guard. They don't have great missile resistance. They don't have any. They just have 90 armor. That's their only form of missile resistance. Alright, later nerds. How they're still holding on, I don't know. I think it's just because it looks like their lord has a chance. You guys gotta back up. They're fast, though. And the crumble. The crumble sets in. Poor guy. Fun battle, though. I love just seeing the Death Guard go to town. They just feel like unkillable monsters. 214 kills. Could send, you know, 
I could send gore herds, ungores, with some raiders helping, and some centigores. I could even poison. Like, they're just going to chew through it. There's no armor on that other side, and there's no armor piercing on my side. Their vampiric hunger ability just keeps them in the fight. Plus, they have really good leadership for a vampire unit. Giants did work there. Of course, Malagor just sitting in the sky doing whatever he wanted. We could have summoned Cygors. We could have done all kinds of stuff. Block of Doom, very effective though. High model count. Low HP on each model count. Uh, types of armies. Like Skaven, like Vampires. Makes Flock of Doom just an incredible spell. Which had to take the artillery offline as fast as we could. Then we'll take the cash. And we got the Armor of Destiny. Excellent. That feels like something we should probably put on Torox. He's currently wearing... Oh, he's got Trollhide. Does he have more than one source of, re of regen, though? I feel like he naturally has regen. This is only active if he's in melee. Hmm. I wonder if he doesn't have redundant healing. It's possible. You know what? Morger could actually use this as well. That's a really good set of armor for Morger. And now that he also has... We have a little bit of money. We can upgrade some of this other stuff. Going to our dread? No, nothing. Um, I mean, I could get more, more chariots, but I think four chariots is enough. When you consider that Kazrak's also on a chariot, and his Bray Shaman will be on a chariot. I mean, that's six chariots. That's a lot. That's enough. Um, just trying to think. Any other buffs, benefits? You're done. You're done. You're trying to be done. We need to move you. The Vol's anvil's too close. We need to come over here. Like the monoliths here. This is where we're headed. Well, let's get there via land. If possible. And that'll be another good spot for another herd stone. Okay. On to the next turn. I don't know what you're doing, man. You're just annoying me. Kind of wish you would just attack. Alright, we got a, another quest battle. I love it. And this is for one of his most powerful abilities slash weapon. It's a weapon, you know, but it gives him the Stab of Ruinous Corruption, which allows him to summon a unit of Chaos Spawn. I think he gets... Well, I thought he got two of these, but they've nerfed this over time. It also increases his unit capacity of Chaos Spawn by another two. Imbued with the Quiddity of Ruin, Morgur's Gnarled Staff summons Deadly Chaos Spawn to do his bidding on the battlefield. And it, in addition to that, it just makes him super jacked. Enemy forces is going to be Elves. Not the most fun for a Chaos Spawn to fight. But I do like the bonus Dread. The insidious elves are never far behind. The forests speak to them and reveal all the secrets that lie beneath the canopy. Ariel is no fool either. She knows Morgur better than any of his enemies and has tracked him down. In her stead, she sends a champion at the head of an Azrai host to put an end to Morgur's dreams of destruction and return Athel Lorin to peace. This is but a fleeting hope, however, for Morgur will not suffer these forest folk to interrupt his desires. This champion will be eviscerated and returned to Ariel in a dozen ruinous pieces. Each more garishly transformed than the last. Very cool. Someone has taken the sword of Clan uh, Cain, not me. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There we go. Let's go smash the Ziggurat of Dawn. And we'll just kind of clean sweep house this way. And then in the end, we'll be left with Hexwaddle. Which, by the time we get there, I'm hoping to have, like, all Bestigors. And we'll be, you know, more leveled up. What is this stack? 
Gore herds, Minotaurs. Hmm. Anything we can give you. No? Okay. Well, let's just keep going. Let's give you... Let's finish off the pendulum, I think. Make it cheap. Let's make sure we camp to regenerate. And we want to save the Minotaurs for Torox. Morgur! Hold off for a second. I want to start heading back this way. I know there's Skaven out here. Skaven and Nagaron. But I might want to do that... That mission. That quest. Okay, let's camp. Got some options. You know what would be really strong would be to get the Vile Ent Entropy ability again. Before we go into the next fight. What units can I bring into my army now? I mean, a lot more Chaos Spawn. I mean, why have, why have Gores when you can have Chaos Spawn, right? That might be enough, though. I think I might be all set, though. We'll recruit for this turn. And then next turn, we'll get that. Let's get the uh, Bloodlust here. It's a good buff for the Wargore to give. Oh, we're going to be in a reef? Oh, no. Okay, let's not be in a reef. Let's regenerate instead of suffering attrition. That seems like a smart, smart move, if you ask me. Kazrak's doing work. Everybody's doing work. Torox needs to land. He needs to get somewhere. Oh, yeah, I like this. Okay. So now what we've got is an opportunity to get rid of you two. And then, uh, well, I didn't, uh, I can't, I can't camp, which sucks. But I will be able to next turn. It's not a big deal. Uh, but what I can do right now, though, is get rid of him. Get rid of you. And then, boom, I've got two more Bestigors in this army. And I'm not going to be able to use all of the Minotaurs. So, let's get rid of this Gore right here. And let's get some of the basic Minotaurs in this army. And then with our Dread... I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buff. I want more Bestigors. I'm shocked I can only get... So many of those guys. And I'm going to get rid of this Centaur. Our Centagore unit here. And I'm going to get another Bestigore. Excellent. I mean, that's three Bestigores and a Minotaur being brought into this army. That's a pretty big series of upgrades. But he's going to need it in order to take stuff from the uh, Mazdamundi tribe. Those dudes are not pushovers. Okay. Morger, we are waiting another turn on him. To do his quest battle. We're going to raise Tor Dranil as a herdstone. And establish our foothold on Ulthalon soil. Plague on both your houses. High elves go down. Herdstone gets raised. Happy to see another set of armor. 
feel like we spent half of today's episode just leveling stuff up. Which is a good problem to have. Granted. Alright, let's buff our Minotaurs. Jabber Slice and Gorgons here with 15% missile resistance, 5 melee attack, and 12% weapon strength. Very good. And we'll get Apocalyptic Visions as well. Which is an excellent buff. Um, yep, more melee attack. You're good there. More melee attack, not a problem. Yes, yes, yes. Level 20, baby. Immortality. You always feel good every time you get that. And then from here... We can, we can recruit. Let's get the shielded minotaurs and the great weapon minotaurs. That's what I wanted. Excellent. Huh. Is there anything else that I want? That's not high tier. I don't think so. Could get some more heroes. Don't really need that. Could... Start thinking about getting some of these awesome items. I've got 24 grand in the bank. Um, I don't think I've gotten the Banner of Madness. I thought I did on somebody, but I, I guess I didn't. Could get another Blind Eye of Seeing. Let's do this. Let's get the Banner of Madness. Causing damage to combatants. That was what I thought I had on Morgar. Wait, is it a banner? It is! It's a banner! Oh my god. That's so good, because we don't need the dough at all. So we'll just give this to Kazrak, and whenever he's engaged in battle now, he'll cause fear and terror. We don't need this either. Uh, let's take this from this Wargore. Giving Kazrak the ability to heal, and we just gave him the ability to cause terror, another 10% physical resistance, and the aura of madness. Yeah, we just made him pretty, pretty good. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna suit up Kazrak. I have a feeling that in the near future we're gonna be happy that he's he's strong. We get bonus siege towers, that's pretty sweet. And this gives Bestigors? Damn. Okay. Monolith of the Gods needs to be strong. It's gotta hold. And then from here, we can go to Skeggy. Probably don't need to do anything but auto-resolve Skeggy. I don't know if it takes into account the bonuses that we have. Decisive victory. Seems good. This might have been a fun one to practice on. If they had more units, if they had a little army here or something, I probably would have done it. Um, let's raise in advance. Tormentor's Sword, that's also a really nice one for someone. Kazrak has now made it to level 20. Congratulations. Um, don't really want any of that. Start trying to get the, the buffs for the Bestigors. Let's move to 10%. And we are very quickly... Oh, it won't let me do it. Sometimes if you go to ex like too close to 10%, it bugs out. I hate it when it does that, but it's not the first time I've ever seen it. I have seen that before. This is all unsettleable. Yeah, we've got to go there. They're trying to do some sort of ritual. Let's move here, and this will probably be the beginning of next episode, guys. And we are drawing pretty damn close to the end. Let's get... I like the casualty replenishment rate. I think that's great. Whenever we're bouncing from fight to fight to fight. Um... I mean, there's a couple sieges here. 
Could lower the campaign movement range of everyone around me. But I think that's it, huh? Malagor needs to get on land. I don't want to destroy anything until I get to... Where did I say? The monoliths. Yeah, I can't even see the monoliths because I don't have that area revealed to me. But that's where I'm trying to get. And then we'll make another herdstone there, our last herdstone. And then... I kind of wanted to get more giants. But guys, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Brett. Channel's Good Talk Gaming. And as always, y'all, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.